myself Pratim Khandelwal and today we are seeing a topic FTIR which stands for Fourier Transformation Infrared Spectroscopy. It's just an advanced type of uh, infrared spectroscopy uh, and we start with the introduction. Actually it uses a Fourier transformation which is a mathematical equation to convert the time domain or the uh, wavelength domain into a frequency domain which we can see in the form of interferogram. Now, how uh, it uses uh, infrared spectroscopy actually uses a, a vibrational motion, a vibration states of bonds, asymmetrical molecular bindings to interpret the functional groups, organic molecules, mainly for organic molecules, FTI is used. Now we'll start with the principle. Actually, it works on the principle that when light falls on the bonds or uh, bonds or the functional groups, it accentuates vibrational states or rotational states, which, when comes to its ground state, emits the radiation which are detected by detectors and converts into the frequency domain, which can be seen in the form of interferogram. This is the principle how it works. Uh, it is useful for finding the organic molecules and mainly the functional groups in it. Now we start the history. As we state that it's an advanced type of infrared spectroscopy. In 1957, the first infrared spectroscopy was designed by Mr. Perkin Almore in 1957. But it uses a prism for the diffraction, which having a far disadvantage, which was that it opaques when we use high level infrared radiations now to overcome that we use gratings but it has some problem with far infrared now we are using a missile cell infra interferometer which is which was uh, the key foundation for making a FTIR uh, but it's not possible without the uh, invention of computers mini con computers because it uses a Fourier transformation to convert the results into a graph so, in 1965, the first mini computer was invented, which was named as PDB-8, and because of that, we are uh, successful in making a FTIR, which was commercially. Now, how it works? There's a helium neon laser which used as the infrared source. When laser pass through this, it gets reflected through a mirror, which is present here, and get again reflected and go parallel to the light source, which was coming from. Here and through the beam splitter, the only laser get the laser and the light should get splitted into two, which you can see in the diagram from here. And when the laser goes and come back from the movable mirror and fixed mirror, it gets recombined and when passed through a sample, give a background spectrum, which was used as a standard to compare the samples, and when it comes to detector it get converted into time domain and transmittance and give us a interferogram which we can compare from the standard one now we'll start instrumentation here we use a infrared source is a helium neon laser this is how in helium neon laser looks like infrared sources may be or different like silicon carbon for mid ir region and we can use tungsten halogen lamp for shorter wavelengths and we can use mercury discharge lamp for the far infrared regions now we'll talk about missile cell interferometer there's a stationary mirror and the moving mirror in it and this, when the light comes to it the beam splitter splits the light into two which two and goes to mirrors which are perpendicular to each other one got diffracted or refracted and one got reflected reflected one is this one you can see split bump split beam and the refracted one is delayed because of the medium because of the, this delayed we got a recombinant beam which give us destructive or, or constructed type of interference which we can use for making up our background spectrum and we can use moving mirror to control the spectrum now we'll start with uh, detectors Detectors are mainly pyroelectric, means when change uh, in temperature take place because of the intensity of IR radiation, it gives us a changes in the time domain, which is converted into the frequency domain and we get our interferogram. 
mainly used detectors are liquid nitrogen cooled mercury cadmium telluride mct detectors which we are used this is how our detector looks like in the middle there is a detector crystal which is mainly made up of lithium now this is a beam splitter which you have seen in the Michelson interferometer it is a close look at how it looks now we are talking about attenuated total reflectance it's just an accessory of FTI spectrometer to measure the surface properties of solid or thin film samples rather than bulk properties this is how our ATR looks like now we are talking about this is the FTR machine which was presently we are using its model name was FTR 6600 and this is the uh, compartment where the sample is loaded Sam here infrared regions pass through the sample and get, get detected here now how to prepare sample in FTR we use mainly solid sample first we grind it and make a samples we usually use 1% or 2% if the sample was hard first we grind it and mix with KBR solution and again grind it and then used here as a sample and these detectors are then connected to the softwares or PCs which are present in the uh, computer which convert the time domain or uh, the means wavelengths or wave number into a frequency domain which give us an interferogram which you can interpret which look like this through these peaks we can find the stretching the vibrational motions of the bonds like stretching bending or the formation any deformation taking place or not we usually this for finding the functional groups in organic molecules now some of the applications like we can use FTR for microscopy and imaging we can use as a detect FTR as a detect